So today what we're doing is running through our second Celebrity Assist webinar. Um, this is a couple of webinars we put together in response to the, the changing world that we're living in today, thanks to the, the whole coronavirus uh, nightmare that's going on. So in yesterday's session, what I did was cover the whole admin side of Celebrity. So what's required to get Celebrity installed and up and running, um, so not up and running, but Celebrity Solution Center up and running so that users are configured and ready to use the software. And in this session today, we're looking at the first steps of what happens next from a user point of view. So how you get the software, how you put it on your machine, what you do with it. So what I'll do is skip on to the agenda. So if any of you missed yesterday's session, there is a recording of it on our YouTube channel. There'll be links on the follow-up emails that come through from this session as well. Um, but uh, it's available on our YouTube channel and we will follow up with that separately. So today's session, as I say, what we're going to cover is the first step. So it's what we need to think about before we start. It's having a look at the Solution Center, which is where we go and get what we need to install. Um, and then we'll run through the installer, we'll launch the software, and we'll look at some of the basic pre-configuration stuff before you do too much work inside Celebrity. And then there's a few other notes as well, a little bit of help, etc. So before we start, these are the things that you need. So the very first thing you need is an internet connection, which I'm guessing if you're watching this, it's not magic, so you will have some sort of connection. But we do need a connection for two reasons. The first one, is we need to go and actually download the software. It is only a couple of hundred megabytes, so it doesn't need to be the big heavy duty internet connection that it will um, download even on a, a slower speed. But you also need an internet connection once you're actually using the software to access the licensing system. Um, so Libre will check when you launch if a license is available, and it will check periodically uh, every few minutes to make sure that license is still available so you can continue to work. If it drops out, you get about 15 minutes to fix that or restore the connection before you have any problems with it. So it's, it's not something that's a continual thing, but it, it does need to be there to ensure that you have a license available. The next thing you need is your account details. So in order to use Celebrity, in yesterday's session, we looked at how users were added to the Solution Center. Once they were added, um, there's, there's two things happen, and this will depend partly on where you guys are as individuals and how far down the Celebrity Road you already are. So if you're a new user, you will have received uh, an email from the addresses no reply at Celebrity.com, but that's an invitation to basically complete your registration. You click a link, you set your password, and that gives you access for the first time to the Celebrity Solution Center. If you already are registered or you've been registered at some point in the past, you will have a username and password. So your username is your email address, usually your company email address, but not exclusively. Personally, I use dozens of things because we use different emails for training, for demos, for these sort of sessions here, and then for the, the real work we do um, in terms of, of training and actually showing people how to use the software. In terms of password, if you've forgotten your password, if it's been a while or you've slept or whatever it is and you've forgotten the password, there is actually a forgot password link on the page. So let me get this on screen. Here we go here. So you can see here we have this option to click a link and that takes you through the process of resetting your password if you've already forgotten what that uh, what that is. So beyond that, only other few things you need is a machine. You need some sort of machine. It's got to be a PC or a Mac, Windows 10 or Mac OS Mojave or later. This machine that I'm on today is running um, Catalina. Um, and the other thing that's worth doing is checking the system requirements. So let me jump out to Chrome, where we have here the system requirements. We can give you links to these uh, as follow up as well, but um, basically this gives you the, the minimum recommended requirements. Um, so the main thing really is decent processor and a good amount of RAM. So 16 gig is preferable. 
Um, it certainly will run on, on older machines with less RAM than that. It'll just be a little bit slower. Personally, I can recommend the new machine that I've got here, which is a 64 gig MacBook Pro, and it's a beast. But um, moving on from that, so you can check the requirements, make sure the machine you've got does fit that. The other thing that personally I can't live without is just a good old fashioned three button wheel mouse with a regular wheel that rolls and clicks. Um, I have one of the Apple Magic Mice. And it's very nice and it's okay for web browsers, but actually for Celebre or any sort of work where you're inside any sort of CAD or BIM tool, where you're scrolling and zooming and panning and zooming extents or whatever else, it's nice to have a good old fashioned wheel um, because it gives you those extra functions. So that's Ken's tip of the day. So beyond that side of things, the next thing we need to do is actually go and look at the solution center. And what I'll do is I'll probably run through it here and then I'll jump out to Chrome so that I'm not um, going backwards and forwards and, and confusing things in the presentation. So the thing that you'll probably see when you sign in is this page here. And I should have pointed out this session applies to all Celebrity products. So the process is virtually identical for Celebrity Anywhere, which is a free viewer that individuals can register for, or Celebrity site or Celebrity office, which are the commercial products that are usually registered to some sort of organisation or small business. Um, there is also an enterprise version, which is the way we manage enterprise accounts for like global, global reach, etc. Um, but typically what you'll see is this sort of page here. I can see clearly um, because I've looked at this a few times, but I can see that this is a regular user account. It's not an admin account. If you're also an administrator on, a, on an account, what you'll see is there's an option here that says admin view, and it will also show that you're on products view. But by default, everybody sees this first landing page. The email address, I've just blurred it out here, but the email address of the account is also shown. Um, so once we're on here, going by the products, there's a few things to look at. So the first thing is the operating system. The only reason I point that out is that today I'm running a Mac inside Mac OS, but I also have Windows running inside of that, inside Parallels. And with that um, operating system, although it detects the operating system that's running, you can actually go and switch to, in this case, from Mac to Windows to download everything into one place and then deploy it from just that one place rather than anywhere else. So I'll show you that when we go inside there in a second. In terms of this product page, what we actually see from it, these are the where we get the downloads for the supported products. So we have in fact three products here, Celebrity Anywhere, Site and Office. It is in fact just one download. So you only have to download it once and then it's available to everybody. I've realized actually the screenshot I've taken here, it doesn't show the download link because I've used uh, this must be an anywhere user rather than a, an office user. That was a, a silly mistake, but I'll show you in a second when we jump out and, and see what's what. So what we'll do is we'll go out and we'll download office. There's a couple of other bits we'll look at, which is the extension page where we can go and wish for or purchase products. And then there's also the training and documentation page as well that uh, we can take a look at some of the things on there worth looking at. So let me just jump across to my browser and I'm going to go to the Celebrity Solution Center. So this is the page I had the screenshot earlier. I'm using this demo uh, email address to sign in. So I've got my username, my password. I've forgotten the password, then obviously follow the link there. You can choose to remember this if you want, so you don't have to type it in each time. But I'm just going to sign in. And as I say, the first thing we'll see is this landing page where we're looking at the products view. Now, because this demo account is also an admin account, there is an option to go to the admin view behind here. Because this is a proper account now, you'll see there is actually the pull down where I can go and download my appropriate license. Now, this user clearly doesn't have, uh, or this account doesn't have Celebrity Site attached to it, so there is no download for this product here. Um, that would be the reason that that would be missing. As I mentioned, we can jump between different operating systems. So I could go to Windows, and that will show the Windows products. As it reloads, there will actually, well, I haven't seen the scroll bars, but there's, there's more um, 
or there's these two additional products that only run on Windows that show up in here that don't show on Mac OS. To download these though, literally all you do is grab the pull down and what we can do is download 9106, that is LibreOffice. Um, if you prefer old school, then we also have Celebri Model Checker 9.9 .9 and 9.8. These are the only supported products that we have. Also, we only get the very latest builds. So 9.10.6 is only a couple of weeks old. When 9.10.7 comes out or 9.10.8 or 9 or whatever we're going to call it, then this will just be updated and the old one will be superseded and replaced. So literally all we do is click to download. I'm not going to go through that process. I've done that already and I'll jump out and show you that. But effectively, that's where you go and grab the download. As I say, it's only a couple of hundred meg, so it doesn't take forever. I also mentioned there's different pages here. So we are on the product page, but what we can do is look at the extensions. And this is where we can come in and see the extensions that are available. Some of them are free. Some of them, depending on your region, are chargeable. There will be prices there. But literally, all we do is come in and if I'm not a buyer, so this is some of the stuff I covered yesterday. If I'm not a buyer, there'll be a wish option. Uh, if I am a buyer, then I can actually pick that, put it in the basket, and I can use this option here to go through and we do a purchase, even although there's the zero um, currency units actually happen. There is no transaction in that sense, or it's a zero value transaction. That was covered in yesterday's session, so you can have a look at the recording if you want to see that. The other bit to take a look at here is just the training and documentation. So there's a few things in here worth looking at. There is the getting started guide. There's also things like downloads for the, the Kobe um, reference guide, this one here. And these are just straightforward downloads that you grab and that'll take you out and, um, well, actually it's done it here inside Chrome. That'll take me and show me it, but I can obviously download that from here. Uh, if required. So that's a, a brief look through the solution center. Let me jump back to PowerPoint. So what we'll do is we'll pretend that I clicked the link and downloaded that. Um, the only other thing actually is the point out there is a logout option just underneath the pull down with the email address. There is a logout if you want to go and sign yourself back out of the page to either change account or just for security reasons. So beyond that, what we'll take a look at now is what happens when we actually run the installer. That's pretty simple. We go and find it. So we can see here, this is the, the one that I downloaded uh, yesterday, 25th, and it's 251 megabytes, slightly bigger for the Mac version. But literally the installer bit of it is the easy bit. You find it, you double click it. You need to have admin rights on the machine to be able to do the install. Um, once Celebri is installed, things like the extensions, you don't need admin rights for that. Those install within Celebri, so they're a localised thing that you don't need to, to have access for that part of the process. Um, but basically, once you've started the installer, you click the buttons to say yes, yes, whatever, go on with it, and let it do its install. So I won't go through that part of the process, but um, it's fairly straightforward. You agree to the licence terms and then just set the path choose your options and off it goes. The process is the same. Um, if you're updating uh, or if you're doing an installation for the first time, if you're doing an update, um, the only slight differences there is it will detect there's an existing version and you can choose to override it, overwrite it or replace it. So it's pretty simple. So once we've done that, and I'll go out to Windows and show you that in a second, we're then going to go through the process of actually launching the software. So just a quick look through what actually happens here. So when we launch the software, we get our splash screen appears, that will then disappear and present us with our login. And in here, there's a, a few things to set. So we need our email and password. These are the same emails and passwords that we use to access the solution center because it's in essence your account. Uh, if you've forgotten your password, there is no forget password option in here. If you've forgotten your password, all you need to do is go back to your browser, go to solution.celebri.com, the Solution Center link, and use the forgot password option there. And that takes you through the process to reset. There is a remember me button down here. And 
Personally, I switched this one on because I know my email address and I don't like to type it out a dozen times a day. You may only use it once or twice a day, but it's just me. I don't like to type it, so we can do that. Um, there is also a proxy server settings, this option over here. So that normally would be in a corporate environment, something to be used because the whole world's adjusting to coronavirus and people are working from home on regular internet connections. If you're not going through a VPN or you're not going through any sort of corporate security, you probably don't need that, but it is something that we would recommend you check with your um, IT department administrator, whoever within your company looks after that side of things. So beyond that, when we've clicked the sign in button, the next thing that happens is we get another button, uh, another dialogue that gives us our option to choose the product we want to work with. This, you can choose any one of these three, but depending on your license assignment and number of licenses you have in your company account and also the availability, so who else might be using the software at the same time, you may or may not get access to the product you choose. So if you pick Celebrity Office and there's already loads of people using the software and using all the company licenses, what will happen is you'll be pushed into Celebrity Anywhere, which then is the, the viewer that allows you to, to see the files, add comments, you can still interact with BCF and things, but you won't be able to do the main checking um, and information takeoffs, etc. The same is true with Celebrity Site. Personally, there is the, this option again that we can remember this choice the next time. Personally, I don't use that because I end up being in and out of the different products. The other thing is just it's good etiquette um, to think about the version you're going to use. So if you're going to be doing checking, then you need to use Celebri Office. If you're going to be doing information takeoffs, then you may be using Celebri Site or Celebri Office. But if you just want to view and add a few comments and review what's already been done, it is a good idea to use the Anywhere product because that doesn't tie up the commercial license and leaves it free for anybody else to use um, within your organisation. So I will show actually once we get into the software, if you tick this button to remember this next time, you can actually get yourself into a bit of a loop. If you've said remember Celebri Anywhere, it will just loop and it will only launch Celebri Anywhere. So that can actually be changed in the software in file settings general, but I'll go in and show you that. That's one of the notes that I've got to, to show everybody. So next little bit is configuration. And what I'll do with this one is I'll jump out to the software, uh, launch the software and show you this side of things. So these ones are all about setting things um, in the background so that you don't get into problems later on further down the line. So um, this first set is the general settings. And there's a couple of things we do to disable the role selection or make sure it's disabled. It's also a good idea to switch on the compact layout that just maximizes the amount of space that you've got on screen. And then we also have these options here. This is where we have the, the remember me options. So this is remembering my username and password. And this bit here is not remembering my product choice so that I can choose between um, whatever versions are already in there. So let me jump out to Windows. Um, these are the installers. So literally you double click follow the, the setup. Um, but what I'm going to do is launch Celebri. So we have a splash screen in the background. This will now be connecting to the license server. Um, it's obviously checked my username and password because I'd remembered that. So I've just bypassed that dialog. And here I'm going to go straight to Celebri Office. So that finishes loading. And as I said in PowerPoint, what I'm going to do is look at file layout, settings, and then general. So in here, this is the default setting. I 
reset everything and install this freshly yesterday. I didn't want to do it live in the session because that's always when the internet goes down or something happens. So in here, what I'm going to do is pick Compact Layout. Now, some of the settings, you'll see there was an asterisk in the PowerPoint and we can give you, well, you can see the recording and give you access to the notes as well if you want. But when we pick Compact Layout, it's telling me that the settings will only take effect the next time I start the application. So I'm going to have to effectively close it down and reopen it. Um, you will see that appear from time to time. The other settings here, this is where if I've set it on a loop where it's only starting in Salibri Office or only starting in Salibri Anywhere, then this is where we can uncheck to reset that so that we get the choice the next time around. So literally that's all I have to do there. If I jump back to PowerPoint. Go. Um, the next one is just really, I won't go through this one, but it's a, a pretty simple one. We go to units and you set the units to the standard that you want to actually work with. So whether that's millimetres, feet and inches, metres, whatever the decimals are, the date format, everything else. These settings are workstation based right now, so you need to set this so that everybody in the company is using the, the same setup. Um, so that you've got some sort of standardization there. This one's a really important one. This is the uh, file settings 3D, and then what we're looking at is a performance tab. And what we need to do here is make sure, so I don't actually know why that line's in there. Ignore that line. Um, what we need to do here is make sure that this option here to save 3D representations with model is switched off. By default, that is switched on. What it actually does, it's a, a legacy setting, and what it actually does is retain extra data within the model, which increases the file size um, to speed up things like the opening times, etc. However, because people are now working from home and we have logistic issues of transferring big files from servers or the cloud or wherever it happens to be to local workstations, it's a good idea to make sure that everybody switches this off so that when you save your SMC file, it makes it as compact as possible. It can, depending on the, the models involved, it can make a massive difference to the file size. So we need to make sure that that's switched off on all your machines. Um, the rest of those settings there, you can play around with them. This one here, what this does, use hardware accelerated culling. This is actually using the graphics card to do the rendering and do the processing in 3D. So if you've got a decent card on a decent machine, that will make a difference to the performance. So the next thing to take a look at is the solution center. And there actually these lines should be on the this area here, I've, I've managed to copy paste in the wrong place. But in the solution center, previously in the session that I covered yesterday, I wished for particular extensions. I set those and assigned them. And we used the file setting solution center to go and install, update, or uninstall those um, additional extensions. So if I jump back out to Celebre, Um, the units, that was a link there, so the default units, it is worth checking because the default option is things like metre or millimetre or cubic litre, metre or litre. So, as I say, you should go through and change those. The 3D performance settings, so all I do is go 3D, go to performance, and then what I need to do is make sure that I switch this option off and that's going to keep the SMC file size as small as possible. One of the questions at the beginning was asking if Celebrity only deals with IFC files. Yes, with a couple of slight exceptions, because we have the option to overlay or underlay PDFs, and also we can work with DWGs if they've been set up and configured and classified in Celebrity to actually work. But essentially, Celebrity only works with IFC files. However, once you create a project and you reference an IFC file, when you save your SMC file, it then compresses all of that and combines it into the SMC project file that we're going to be working with. And what this does is make that compression the maximum level 
and uh, reduce the file size to as small as possible. So I'll okay that one. And what I was talking about in the last section was just looking at the solution center. So in here, in the background, inside the solution center set by the administrator, I've been given access to these various different extensions. And once we're in here, literally all we do is just say install and that's installed. If I want to uninstall it, guess what? I press that button there. Um, so literally I just pick what I want to install, it does its thing and that's it. I'm not going to do the UK resources because they're about 30 megabytes and they might take um, a little bit longer to do. But uh, effectively that's all that I have to do here to set this up. The only other thing to point out is that some of the settings like when I install Kobe um, or when I change some of the 3D settings we may have to restart the machine. It will give us a warning in red as it did when I uh, switched on compact layout but it means we just close Celebrity, reopen it and then the settings are applied. So the final bit is just some notes general things, information to go and find and, and use as a resource. So the first thing is if you want to find out a little bit more news about what's happening with Celebrity in terms of updates, general news, more of these sessions, etc. Our main website, Celebrity.com, is a good place to look. There's also Help, which takes you through Help, funnily enough. Um, and then in terms of what's going on with the updates, so we are on 9.10.6. Salimi.com, the news page, and then releases will give you all the information and release notes to do with that particular version, as well as what's happened in the previous as well. Another good place to keep an eye on is all the different social media channels. So we've got the, the usual suspects like Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, and YouTube. Again, there'll be links to those in the emails that are part of this registration. But beyond that, there's a few other little things more on the technical side to take a note of. So one of the issues, if you have not the best internet connection, one of the things you can use is an option to borrow a license. You will see it if you look in File and Help, then there is this borrow license option down here. Once you click borrow license, sorry, my mouse is, I'm working with two screens here. So once you click borrow license, you'll get another dialogue up here and you can borrow a license for up to 14 days. We do have to have a, a big sort of caution warning on this that if you are in a, an account that has only one or only a couple of licenses, if you borrow a license, that will take that license out of circulation for whatever time you borrow. So if it's one day or 14 days for that period of time, nobody else within the organization can use Celebri or use that commercial license. Even if you only dip in and out for five minutes a day, you are taking it out of circulation for 24 hours. So it's a useful thing, but be cautious when you use it so that you don't keep others from using the software. If you have any technical problems, we're all working in new places and uh, adjusting to new ways of working and everything else. The main thing really to point out here is that our support services still are operational um, pretty much as normal. There may be a bit of a delay because people are in different places, so communication between people might be um, a little bit restricted, but in essence, anything that you send through support will just be dealt with in the, the normal way as it would be if people were in the, the one physical office location. If you have any technical problems, then the mechanism to contact support is an email, and you literally just email support at salibri.com. It's a good idea to include, or if you can get into the software, to go to File, Help, and then use this Copy to Clipboard button. That captures all of this information here, which is all of the technical details about Salibri, the version, the build, the operating system, the extensions installed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Stick that in email, and that gives whoever picks up the case a good start or a good indication of what you're working with and if there's any problems. So the first thing that I can see here looking at this is that this is 9.10.2. Uh, no, that one is, yes, yeah, sorry, this one here, the build number of the software is 9.10.2.162. So that badly needs an update because it's a few versions out of date, a few builds out of date. Um, 
Another thing that's worth doing is including a copy of the log files. So when Celebrity runs, every time it runs, it creates a runtime log. Um, there are runtimes, there's also there's a couple of other log files as well, but basically these are in the applications folder or within program files as a log folder. And literally all you do is zip all of that up, stick it on the email and send it through as well. And that captures much more detailed information about what's actually going on in there. Beyond that and beyond this session, a few other resources to um, to look out for are things like on YouTube, there are the Get Grips movies. This is 10 movies, it's only about 40 minutes worth, but it's a bunch of movies I've recorded that take you through the process of getting started with Celebri. So um, the very basics, a little bit more on the sort of pre-project configuration, but then the basic steps of the interface, how you navigate, how you get around the model, what you do with the model, using the selection basket, adding dimensions, cutting sections, all these sort of things. So it's something to go and uh, take a look at. So other than that, keep an eye out on social media online for updates um, and um, just have fun. <laughs> um, so so I'm reading questions. I can't read and talk at the same time. But uh, other than that, that is the end of our session. So um, thank you for attending. Um, if you have any questions, we have a little bit more time if you want to file those across. But other than that, that hopefully takes you through the process of getting the software on your machine and getting started. So there's a question here about Celebri, does it have a bug reporter? Um, bug reporter, is that an ARCHICAD user? Because that's terminology from, from Graphisoft. Um, we don't have a bug reporter as such, but we do have these log files which um, the technical team can interpret or it can go to the uh, development team to, to go further into it. There's also further options that in some cases, if you go through support, they'll come back and tell you how to switch on advanced um, debugging or something it's called. It's a technical term, but basically it does more detailed logs that the developers can use as well. Um, okay. Cool. Um, there's only there's another question about using a, a 3D connection mouse. I know this has been asked in the past. Uh, I've actually got one myself. Um, it, we don't support them right now, um, but it is something that I know, as I say, because I have one as a, a paperweight in the bottom of a drawer. It's, it's something that is on the, the developer's radar. Um, but I don't have any details of when we might be able to support that sort of thing. So right now, just regular old mouse. Recorded session. That should be out later today, if not tomorrow. Um, certainly yesterday's was released um, late on in the, the afternoon. So it takes a couple of hours for go to webinar to process the recording and then there's a little bit of topping and tailing to be done just to tidy up slightly before it goes on YouTube. So a few hours and we should get that recording out to you as well. Anybody that's registered for the session, they will automatically get a, a copy uh, of that link to the, the movie. Cool. Uh, and there's another question, is it possible to connect Celebri with BIM Collab? Yeah, that's actually one of our oldest um, connections. Um, I, I can't really go into it here because I don't have anything set up uh, on this machine. Um, but if you want to drop an email to support at Celebri.com, and just ask for details on how to configure the BIM Collab connection. There's a few links and things that are, are easy to find that uh, they'll be able to send you and get you up and running with it. But it's, it's a pretty simple process. You just connect to their server with your account details and from there off you go. It's, it's really pretty straightforward. So we can connect to, there's a few different 
BCF servers that we can connect to, but BIM Collab is certainly one of them. So any other questions? We'll give it another few minutes. Um, okay, so there's a couple of more questions. Is there a manual online? Uh, it depends what you mean in the sense of a manual. There's online help, which takes you through the, the various different processes. So it's not a manual as such that you read from start to finish. Um, you can access that. From, let me just jump back to Windows. Um, so from help, there is help. And this takes you to the online system. So in here, there's various different bits. So there's getting started. Uh, there's then different, I suppose you would call them chapters if it was a, a book in that sense. But you can go through these at various different articles and that'll take you through the parts hopefully that you're looking for. Um, okay, so there's a question about, is really, effectively talking about advanced training materials so um, in terms of checking rule sets adjustments gatekeeper rule sets uh, we long story but not right now but it is something we're working on we actually have a new uh, delivery team which i'm part of uh, working with hq and one of our tasks is to improve the amount of documentation for this advanced side of the software so not right now but certainly keep an eye on the website, keep an eye on help because that is developing and will be developing over the coming months. Um, okay, so I think that's pretty much everything. There's, there's maybe another couple of questions. If I haven't specifically answered your question, then if it's a technical thing, I would recommend you follow up by emailing support at Celebri.com. Um, other than that, hopefully I've answered everything else. If you do have anything else, we'll give it another 60 seconds, whatever, um, and then uh, we'll call it a day. Uh, okay, there is a question here. The Solution Centre is not working. Does it work on mine? I mentioned this yesterday, actually. If you go to solution.celebrity.com and the page doesn't come up, I think it's an error 500. There was an error appeared just last week. Um, there's been a couple of issues. The internet is a lot slower in the past week to 10 days as more and more people are working from home and probably streaming Netflix and YouTube and whatever else. Um, if that appears, there's a couple of quick things to do. Um, it's probably a caching issue that can be cleared. A quick fix for that or a quick workaround for it is to use an incognito tab if it's Chrome. Specifically, the error last week was Chrome. Um, so you could try that or try a different browser and that should get you in there. Um, hopefully that fixes it for you. Okay, so I think we'll Call it quits. Ah, it was Chrome. Yeah, sorry, the, the users just come back. It's, it's Chrome. So, yeah, try an incognito window. So, you get that from the three little dots at the side. Um, it's okay on a Mac, um, but on Windows, it, it seems to be something that's going on with it. So, uh, try Firefox or Edge, and that'll get around it for you. Um, but it's something that uh, just, I think, internet overload is is partly to blame, so uh, it will resolve itself. Um, but I think that's pretty much the questions dried up. So what I'll do is call it quits at that. So thank you very much for your time and um, stay safe um, and stay tuned for, for other updates via various different channels. But thanks again for your time.